What is up guys, Sharpen here! Now this tutorial was both suggested and voted by the people on my Discord server, who by the way, went absolutely crazy for it. Now if you want to vote for your tutorials and decide which content I post on my channel, the invite link for my Discord server will be in the description for you to do just that. And the tutorial voted for today is called Custom Creatures. And again, it's one of those tutorials which might seem hard but they're really not. So don't worry, I'm sure everyone will be able to follow it nicely. I would like to ask you to hit the subscribe button and click the bell to get notified of my tutorials as they come out. And with that on the side, let's start the tutorial. First I want to show you how textures work, and for that I have this Steve skin reference on my desktop. Let's open it up with, you guessed it, paint.net. Now I've mentioned this program in my tutorials a lot because I use it and it's very, very simple to use and it has everything you need, so I recommend you get it. The invite link will be in the description for you. Enough blubbering, let's get back to the video. So, what's the first thing we see in here, besides madness? We can obviously make out Steve's face, I mean, it's this square right here. And uh, this one would be the side of his face, this one the other side. This one I can assume is the top, the back, and this one is the bottom. Then we have the same for legs, bodies, arms, and basically all of his body parts. So what does this tell us? Well, for one thing, we do know that each face has its own texture on the image, kind of positioned in a little grid. So the front is here. The left and the right are touching them, the back is on the right side, always. Uh, and up here we have the top and the bottom. If we want to make our own creature, we have to make like a texture map that works in a similar way than this Steve skin. So I want to go to File, New. Oh, I don't know the numbers. Okay, let's, let's click Image, Resize, and it says 64 by 64. Let's do that. File, New, and go for 64 by 62. I just had to check. Now we should get this image, like a white square. Now just erase the background because we need a blank texture. For starters, I don't even know what my creature is gonna look like, so let's do that first. I should have planned this ahead, I really shouldn't improvise as much. It's gonna have a long head. The front face is gonna be 8 by 8. The length is gonna be 12, let's say that. Since it's 12 pixels long, and as you see here, the top side is on the top. It's, it's 12 pixels long, so let's go 12 pixels down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 12. So we should start drawing on this line. We should start drawing on this line here. We have to make an 8x8 square here. 8. So this is one face of the block. Let's make it black. But this is the left side, remember? So it has to be 12 pixels long. 9, 10, 11, 12. So add 4 pixels to it and just color it up. This is the left side of the face. Now we need an 8x8, so uh, it's basically this. Hold down shift to make a perfect square. The front face is going to be red for now, just so I know what it is. Now we got an R top automatically, so the top is this one, the same length as the face, and 12 pixels up because of the length of the side here, so it's 12 pixels. Imagine these three faces here just folding in together. The sides would fit perfectly, and these corners are already touching. This is what you're doing. You're making a three-dimensional grid. So the top is going to be yellow. This is supposed to be the bottom, so let's go for eight pixels thick. So one, two, three, four. Let's make it blue. This is going to be the side, but then again, the sides are 12 pixels. You just gotta know what you're doing. There's a lot of math, not really, but there's a lot of counting. You have to know the exact dimensions of your creature. Let's make this one green. The back is 8x8 again, and let's make this one pink. These are our faces of the head. Let's give it a face. If you don't know how paint.net works, I recommend you clicking the eye in the corner because it will redirect you to a video where I talk about paint.net and it, its mechanics a lot. So if you want a bigger understanding about paint.net, I recommend watching that video first. And uh, I believe some people already suggested it as its own tutorial, don't worry. I'm gonna do that, it just needs to get voted first. Yeah, this is going to be my face. It's very derpy, I know, and I don't even mind. Now, I am no texture artist, and the textures don't exactly match with the faces, but this is something I imagined. So, the face is here. This is the top, which is supposed to be the hair, dirty and stuff. These are supposed to be the sides, left and right, and those are just kind of bursting out of the face. This is the back, and this is the bottom, kind of rotting and stuff. So it's gonna be like a, a weird creature. If I go to File, Save As, Creature, I wanna save this image on my desktop, but save it as a PNG, because PNG is a file format that supports transparency. Click OK. Now I want to open up the model bench. New model, Creature, no template, next. Now for our texture, Creature 1. 
create model. First, I want to add a new cube. And it's automatically going to, get, going to add a new body part as well as a new cube. So this new body part, this part here, is actually what you're going to move in the program. Call this body part head. This shape here isn't going to appear in the program. It's just appearing on the model. So like you can have multiple shapes, but one body part to move all of them. This is how it works. Now I want to click this icon to show the UV stuff. Now I want to drag this little dot here on the corner. So as you see, it already says left, right, back, top, bottom and stuff. So if I extend this left here, look what happens. It covers it perfectly. If I put this up, you can uh, mess with the size on how up and down is gonna work. I want to close this up and as you see here, the head is in. This is my long head. So I want to position the head, minus 4. Okay, let's leave the Y as it is. Minus 8. So now it's supposed to be in the center. No, wait, let's go for minus 6. Yeah, right, it's 12 units long. What am I doing? The body part is going to rotate from this point here. Actually, I want to have the body on the back, so let's let's position it so the custom rotation point is in here. I mean, your head is in the ground now, but this is the custom rotation point, and the shape was moved here. Now, the body part can be moved anywhere it wants, and the custom rotation point will remain here, so I can simply rotate it as it is. As for bendable body parts, I can simply select the body part here, and go under bend, make it bendable. Which part of it will bend? Let's go with lower and let's go with X. Do this, kind of see what's going on. So lower isn't really what we want to bend, front. Because the front is going to bend, yes, this is what I want. So let's bend it just a bit, like the front face is going to bend. So as you see, it is bending, but the bending offset is kind of funny. So if we mess with the bending offset, you can actually, let's put it to six, which is just the half. So now we can bend the head up and down. If I increase the size, this actually looks worse. Let's let's go back to this because this was honestly the best. The texture stretching here is something you can't avoid, so that's something you have to figure out yourself. If I go with the Y, oh left and right. Okay, so now we know exactly where the bending offset is, and it's actually in that specific point right here. Where the body parts pivot point is. So if we go for pivot offset, minus four, and then the Y minus 4, so now bending offset should be in this point right here, like exactly where the model of bending point is. Now if you move this back to where it was before, so now I was interrupted. So as I said, the shape's pivot point needs to be where you want the bends to start from. So this is the pivot offset, where your cursor is here. You can adjust the pivot offset right here. So now the bend will start from this point over here. And the body parts pivot offset is where you will rotate your head. Now as I adjusted this pivot offset, as you see, the head will now bend as it should. We fixed this issue. As well as the Y now works fine. If I go to Z, yeah, we probably don't want that. Although, if we increase the bend size, that looks much smoother. So let's go for the bend size of 10. Yeah, that looks ugly. Then it looks round. Let's see, let's go for something in between, like a 6, which doesn't look too horrible, I guess. Yeah, let's go with 6. So this is now my head and draw the rest of the body parts. Now you have to position them on this image. And if you run out of space, either increase the image size or just use a different image. You can import multiple textures for your model. So let's do just that. So this part right here is supposed to serve as the body, as the front face. This is the side, this is the side, this is the back, and these are the top and the bottom. So. Let's export this, save it as a creature.png. We come into the model bench here, the textures right here, click the creature texture and click relink texture. So now I will browse for it again and it will update. So the head remains unchanged, I didn't change any pixels on there. But if I add a new body part, body, and give this body part a new cube. So let's click this and uh, define the body. So this is it. Oh, I see seem to have messed up with the ratios. Okay, never mind. I'll just take this last pixel off. See, I messed up a little bit. This is why I need to plan ahead. Okay, let's say that's it and uh, keep it as it is. So this is now the body. Let's adjust the pivot point. So the bend is going to start from here. On this point, this is where I want the bend. Let's just position it here so it's attaching to this. Oh god, this looks horrible. Actually, let's scale the XY just a little bit so it looks bigger at least. Lock this head on the body. So now it's locked on the body. If I try to bend the body, this happens. Yeah, 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 sure, because it's it's set to lower. So let's go back to front. And if I bend this, yeah, the head will bend with it. So if I bend the head now, 
still works. So both the head and the body are bending. This is great. So now let's bend the body and adjust the offset to be seven and a half, I guess. And we can increase the bending size, to make it more smooth. The head is now stretched because we resized the body. So let's try to scale the head down a bit. So yeah, this is not how you do it. I messed up. So now I'm trying to fix my mistake here. Actually, what you should do, you should build from the body as it's the biggest body part and then lock body parts on it later. This is also how I wanted to bend in the Z. Well, let's give it this as well. So this is now the body and the head. I will make the rest of this beast and uh, we'll see you in my animator. So what I've made here is very random, as we can all agree. I added two random horns on the head for you to see that they disappear once you export the model. I made a mistake, however. You'll see what I mean later. I'll explain what I did wrong. And I added the back fin. Only bends in one direction. Forwards. Oh, wait. I know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn this 180 degrees. So now this is forwards and these are still forwards. So yeah, it's got two legs, a back fin and two horns which are a part of the head body part. And that's what I did wrong, you'll see why. Save the model as, create a new folder, call it creature. I already done that before once I save it and save it as creature. I already saved it before. Now on the desktop, you can close everything up. On the desktop, you will have this new creature folder and when you open it up, you can see that your texture as well as your model in the same folder. So if I open up my animator now, 1.2.0. This thing opens pretty slow now. Okay, let's go for thumbnails, I guess. Just some random project. Open up your model bench, import a model. Now browse for the model, creature, creature. Now this thing is inside my animator now. And the custom rotation point is right here. Why is it right here? Well, because in the model bench, this is the center of the world. If you wanted your rotation point to be like, I don't know, in the middle, you have to create your entire model in the center of the world although I'm pretty sure I could simply move the body down let's try that creature 2 so yeah that's it so this is the first one with the custom rotation point in the ground let's let's import the second one that one should have the rotation point in here so that's perfect one thing you know is glitching are the horns because I messed it up while I made them. They shouldn't be a part of the head because the head is a bendable body part. The horns are gonna be glitching while bending because the horns are a part of that body part, so they're going to they're going to be bending with the head. I should add two body parts, you know, one for the neck, which is bendable, and one for the head, which is solid. And then put the horns on the head, which is solid, to prevent any glitching, so you can't bend the horns either. So now let's see what we've done here. So the bend of the body seems to be working pretty fine, the way we made it. The head, which shouldn't be bending, is bending. I mean. We made it bend, but that was a mistake. Also works. Uh, the glitching horns. Back fin, which bends forwards and not backwards. And your legs, which also bend in only one direction. Now we can say that this thing doesn't exist in Minimeter, right? So you could say that this is a custom creature and you made it all by yourself. Well, I did, but now you know how. So you can do two. Make a texture, map it perfectly, then build your creature and add the bends and stuff. However, be careful if you're adding multiple shapes, be careful about the bending. So that's how you create custom creatures. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and if you did, you can let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and stay sharp.